Dobro večer, dame i gospodo. Ne mogu opisati kolika mi je čast biti ovdje večeras i na ovaj svećeni dan sa vama. In English, this would mean something like, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I can't put it into words what an honor it is to stand before you all on this special day for us. What an experience the last four years were. I never thought something like this would happen to me. To many of you in this arena, getting a college degree was a natural progression of your lives. For me, not quite. If someone six years ago told me that I would be graduating from a college in the United States with a degree in communication studies and finance, I tell them they're crazy. After all, I wanted to become a professional tennis player. My journey started in Croatia, a small Eastern European country, a beautiful country that you should definitely consider for your next vacation trip. Uh, what you might not know is that I'm older than Croatia. I was actually born in Yugoslavia, which four years later separated in six different countries, one of them being Croatia. So just like any new business or a project, Croatia is still in the process of figuring out uh, what's the best way to treat its people, I guess. Uh, I grew up playing tennis almost every day. I started when I was three and a half, and by the age of seven, I was already playing tournaments. The results were pretty promising, so that's what not, uh, motivated me to keep working harder. I was always ranked among the best in the country. But when I was 14 years old, I was at the first big crossroad in my life. School or tennis, or both. And to many of you here, this might sound like a very unreasonable question. Of course, of course you go with the both. But uh, for many Croatian tennis players, this is a decision that every generation faces. Approximately 90% of my friends who still played competitive tennis at that time chose, the, chose to go only with tennis. My parents and I decided I would pursue both. This was anything but easy. You see, in Croatia, school is much different than here. You don't get to pick your classes. You don't get to pick at what time you want to go to school. Attendance is mandatory, and you can't miss class even if you think you're on top of the things. We have both written and oral exams since the fifth grade. There are no class notes on the internet or no syllabi for classes. You just have to be there and pay attention. No drinks or food allowed. And even if you wanted to go to the restroom, you had to raise your hand and ask in front of everyone if you can. None of this is really bad, but just very different and much stricter than here. So balancing tennis and school was challenging. Practice in the morning, school in the afternoon, or vice versa, while the majority of people I knew had only one thing to worry about. Many times, I thought about giving up school because I wanted to follow my dream of becoming a professional tennis player. But my parents helped me keep my head on straight and explain that this would all pay off in the end. And it did. It paid off in the most unexpected way possible. My opportunity came when I was a junior in high school. Somehow, University of Minnesota coaches Jeff Young and Urban Ljubic heard of me and decided to bring me to Minnesota on an athletic scholarship. At first, I was really hesitant. In Croatia, the perspective was that if you go to college, you're given up on your professional tennis career. And I really wasn't sure if I wanted to do that. However, after a lot of conversations with my family and friends, I chose the athletic, collegiate athletic career instead of risking it all and going pro. After all, coming from Croatia to the States was something that most of my friends could only dream of. So in January 2007, I arrived to the States for the first time. My coach picked me up at the airport and we're driving back on the 35W. And here it is, the skyline of Minneapolis. And I turned to my coach and said, hey, Jeff, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. It was the first time I had seen that many skyscrapers in person. And then we went to good old Burrito Loco afterwards. <laughs> and uh, 
the things got a little bit messy, so the first word I actually learned on American soil was, believe it or not, the napkin. Uh, so first semester was tough. I didn't speak English well. I was very shy. I missed my family. I missed my friends. And I had a hard time adjusting as the new guy on the team. At one point, I even thought about giving it all up and going back home. But I'm so glad I didn't. Soon, I realized I was at a very different place than the one I grew up in, a better place. Wherever I'd turn, I'd be amazed by the smallest things. School became enjoyable. Choosing my own classes at the time I want, really? How awesome is that? I'll never forget when I got my first syllabus and I said to myself, wow, these guys are really organized. They know in January what their homework is in May. As far as tennis goes, I had better resources here than I could ever dream of back home. Baseline Tennis Center, for example, this is a collegiate tennis facility here, but this collegiate facility is nicer and bigger than any facility in all of Croatia. And I got my first locker for the first time in my life. On the U of M tennis team, we traveled country by plane, stayed at nice hotels, stayed at nice restaurants. It was just incredible, nothing that I expected. Eventually, I realized I was not going to make it in professional tennis. It's not that I wasn't good, but tennis is one of those sports, if you're not top 150 in the world, you just don't make any money, and you have to spend a ton of it to maybe, and maybe just get there. Being top 150 is tough, but this was no problem anymore. Now I had something else going for me. I had my education to turn to. I started my college career as a kinesiology and pre-physical therapy major, but later found my passion in communications and business. When I was a junior, I became a part of the Carlson School, one of the best business schools in the country. I used all of my life lessons and Carlson support networks to get the most out of these two years I shared with you. Looking back, I have a lot to be thankful for. All the people I met, advisors, mentors, professors, and the students, my friends. All the things I got to experience using all the Carlson resources, my internship, working in the Undergraduate Business Career Center, they all led me to today, a day when I believe, now more than ever, that you can achieve anything you want to if you're willing to work for it. This place always amazed me by how it supported me when I was exploring new opportunities and changing my mind about my ultimate direction. But it also helped me grow when I decided what I wanted to do. I grew up not believing in the sky is the limit, but by coming here, I fell in love with the American dream and become to see walls of boundaries and limitations fall away from my life. So if I can offer only one piece of the advice today, I would say to never take things for granted. Stop and think for a second. Try to be thankful for all the opportunities you have and take advantage of them. They are all over the place and now is the time to make the most of them. This country will reward you appropriately. Never doubt that. Najskrenije čestitke i sretno svima u novim pohodima. Congratulations and best of luck in your future endeavors. Class of 2011 rocks. Go Gophers!